Hey guys, I'm Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography and I'm based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. And this is the brand new Nikon 14-24S from Nikon Z mount cameras like the Nikon Z5 that I have it mounted to here. It's a lot lighter, it's a lot faster, it's a lot sharper, but it's also a lot more expensive. So is it worth it? Let's find out. First up is the build quality. And I think the first thing that you're gonna notice is how light it is. If you ever use the old 14 to 24, it's a brick by comparison. The old LEDs came in at 2.2 pounds. This new one comes in at only 1.4 pounds, which is pretty amazing considering it covers the same focal length and aperture range. The zoom ring is smooth and tactile with the perfect amount of resistance. You'll note that the barrel doesn't extend or retract. However, you can see the front element extending and retracting on the inside of the lens. The focus ring is also smooth and tactile with the perfect amount of resistance. Now Nikon's done something here that I've never seen before on a lens. Usually a wide angle lens like this has a really bulbous front element making the use of standard screw on filters a no go. Now Nikon has given us two different lens hoods. One that covers the front element and the other that doubles as a filter holder. It's a neat trick because this second hood allows us to screw on 112 millimeter filters. That's great, but generally speaking, filters that big are also very costly. But this is much more convenient than having to buy a third-party accessory. The other thing that Nikon has done is allow us to place gels on the inside of the lens at the mount. I've never really taken advantage of that, but it's a nice touch if you're into that sort of thing. Speaking of the lens hood, Nikon has finally solved the lens cap dilemma for their wide-angle lenses. The old 14 to 24 had this plastic cover that would just slide on, but it would often fall off exposing the front element. This is bad for me because usually my camera's in the back of my car and sometimes it gets knocked around a bit. The new cap clicks firmly into place, but interestingly, there's only one set position where you can secure it. It does take some getting used to, but it is a better way to go about things. On the inside, it's a complicated formula of 16 elements arranged in 11 groups, and included in that formula are three spherical elements to reduce spherical aberrations and distortion, four extra low dispersion elements to reduce color fringing and chromatic aberrations. They've also applied something called an R-Neo coating in addition to nano crystal coatings. According to Nikon, this prevents ghosting and reflections. Altogether, it sounds really impressive. The aperture ranges from f2.8 to f22, and there are nine rounded aperture blades for smooth bokeh rendering should you need it. Usually with wide angle lenses, we're generally trying to get everything in focus, but nice bokeh is a bonus should you need it. I mean, you have to get close to blur the background, but it's pretty cool. Something that's also new for Nikon this time, and this is borrowing from the folks over at Zeiss with the baddest line, Nikon has incorporated an LED light display for the focus distance meter. It's a nice trick, but when I'm manually focusing, the lens seems to react to how quickly I turn the focus ring rather than by how much. I think I prefer an analog distance meter. Okay, true confession time. There's actually a third ring on this lens, and this ring actually controls the aperture. It's actually an aperture ring, it's great. It's really smooth, really versatile, it's very thin, and I actually thought it was part of the lens's aesthetic when I first saw it. I didn't, I didn't think it was actually a ring, but uh, I noticed it, and I was like, what is this? And it rotated, and I'm like, what the? Well, it turns out it's an aperture ring, and very smooth, very functional. I don't use it that much, because it's kind of like, it's similar to the focus ring in that it's fly-by-wire. If I rotate it very fast, it changes aperture very quickly. If I rotate it slowly, it changes the aperture slowly. I'm not a big fan of fly-by-wire controls, um, but it gets the job done if you need it. One other thing, the lens is weather sealed, which is great if you shoot landscapes and need to take the lens out into the elements. This is the first lens that I've used in a while that I really can't find any notable downsides. I mean, I prefer an analog distance meter, but that's kind of a reach. So for build, it's nearly flawless, and as such, it's a perfect 10 out of 10 for build quality. Next up is autofocus speed and accuracy. Now, this is a little bit of a surprise for me because in my real estate photography, I like to use single point AF because I like to move the point around the room and focus on a spot somewhere in the middle of the room to get the entire scene in focus. I usually focus on a point of contrast, like say where a window meets a wall. Now, interestingly, in this situation, I was getting a lot of jackhammering. The lens might go back and forth four or five times before it locks on 
or doesn't lock on. It's really strange. However, when I use the other autofocus methods like full screen or face detect, I find that autofocus is perfect and decisive and truly amazing. Bottom line is, if you use it in a situation where you want to photograph people, I think you're probably going to be just fine. If you photograph real estate like I do with this lens, then because, again, I'm shooting static subjects and if it takes a second or two to focus, it's not that big of a deal. If you're a wedding photographer and you need to focus on faces and you have to do it quickly, then definitely do not use the single point autofocus method, at least not with an Nikon Z5. Might be different with the Z6 and the Z7 because I don't really think it's a lens issue. I think it's a camera body issue. Fortunately, again, if you shoot static subjects, if it takes a second or two to focus, not that big of a deal. Aside from that, autofocus speed is very fast and very silent as well. Therefore, casting aside my issue with single point autofocus, I don't think autofocus performance really gets much better than this. I'm going to ding it a little bit for that single point autofocus performance, but all in for autofocus speed and accuracy, the 14 to 24 gets a nine and a half out of 10. Next up is optical quality and the quality of the results. I photograph in the neighborhood, pun intended, of a thousand homes per year and I'm very familiar with wide angle lens performance and a lot of the issues that are associated with them. Generally speaking, we have to deal with distortion, flare performance, and specifically edge performance. The old Nikon 14 to 24 g was and still is a very solid performer all the way around. Flare was a bit of an issue with that lens, as was edge performance. But I'm pleased to say the new 14 to 24 though still has some flare, which is frankly very common for a wide angle lens. But overall, its performance is remarkably better. Distortion is well controlled, again, especially for a wide angle lens. Chromatic aberrations are, so far as I can tell, are minimal to non-existent. But most importantly, edge performance is superlative. Really, it's truly excellent, especially when compared to other wide angle lenses in this category. Now, don't get me wrong, edge performance isn't perfect, but relatively speaking, it's amazing. Now, keep in mind, I'm using the 14 to 24 in real estate photography, and I'm generally trying to get everything in a scene in focus. So I'm shooting at f8, meaning you would expect better edge performance at f8. But even at, at f8 on other wide angle lenses, they're not quite as sharp as this. In the last two months, I've worked with, I've worked with what I believe to be the new standard in ultra wide angle lenses, both the Fujifilm 8 to 16 and now the Nikon 14 to 24 S for the Z mount are the best two wide angle lenses I think I've ever used or tested. They're both amazing. Now on real estate, I primarily shoot Nikon and I've been using the Z5 as it is essentially a mirrorless D750. And you all know how I feel about the D750. But I'm gonna say it, the Z5 and the new 14 to 24 are my new choice in real estate photography. I'll likely pick up another Z5 or a Z6 Mark II in the near future to complete my migration to mirrorless. My company is going mirrorless. And the new 14 to 24 is in my opinion, the new standard for an ultra wide angle lens. But as with all my reviews, don't take my word for it, see for yourself. The next two minutes or so will be a series of still images and video clips shot on the Nikon 14 to 24 S. And I'll let you be the judge, but to my eyes, the 14 to 24 is simply one of the best wide angle lenses you can buy in the marketplace today. So last up is value, 
and there has to be a trade-off somewhere, right? Well, here it is. The Nikon 14 to 24S is $2,400. Now, there are a lot of wide-angle lens options out there that'll likely get the job done for you and for a lot less money. I totally agree. But if you're like me and you're a legacy Nikon shooter who wants to stay in the Nikon system and is migrating to Nikon mirrorless, then a lens like the 14 to 24 should make sense for you if you make your living in wide-angle photography. Now, there is one other important value consideration here as well. The fact that Nikon includes what is the equivalent of one of those Wonderpana lens filter or filter adapters, it's a nice value add. Now, granted, you have to buy the filter and 112 millimeter filters aren't cheap. Bottom line, the 14 to 24 was easy for me to justify because I shoot so much real estate and I have a very discerning client base who want the very best. A lens like the Nikon 14 to 24S helps me stay ahead of the competition. It's a truly amazing optic and I believe it's worthy of its lofty price tag. Now, whether that makes sense for you in your business, well, that's up to you. For me, it's been a very worthwhile investment. So for value, the Nikon 14 to 24S gets a nine out of 10. To wrap up this review, we gave the Nikon 14 to 24S f2.8 lens for the Z-mount system a 48 and a half out of 50 in our coveted Editor's Choice Award. The final word, if you happen to be a working professional who shoots real estate photography for a living and you have a discerning client base, then I don't think you can go wrong with the Nikon 14 to 24 f2.8 S lens. It's an outstanding performer that checks many of the boxes needed for the working professional. Stellar optics, relatively lightweight, weather sealing, etc. It's a lens truly at the top of the wide angle lens mountain of lenses out there. But in order to obtain such outstanding quality, well, you just have to be prepared to pay for it. I'm Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography and I'm based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. If you like videos like this, please go ahead and give me a like or better yet, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and until the next time, happy shooting.